friends, and welcome back to Moment of Music with Miss Sloan. Today is a very special day. It is our 20th episode, and in honor of such a special occasion, I have a very exciting interview with someone who knows a whole lot about the human voice for you to watch today. I hope you enjoy. All right, introduce yourself. Hi, kids. My name is Alden Pridgen. And I am good friends with Miss Sloan. We met when we were at Meredith College in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, what, almost 10 years ago, Megan? Uh, more than 10 now. Wow, it's been a while. Um, but Megan and I became great friends and we have remained great friends ever since. And we love talking about music and all things related to the voice. And so I'm really excited that um, we're working together today to talk to you about some really cool things. Yes. Um, so after we went to Meredith College, I ended up transferring and going to the School of the Arts in Winston-Salem. And I spent- what? what did you do there? To become a professional singer, of course. What, what kind of music did you want to sing? Opera. Yeah, so yeah. I- I spent four years there learning to sing opera, and after that, after I graduated, I, um, I have been singing professionally. Um, but while I was in school, I started having some trouble with my voice, um, and I had to see a speech pathologist for a little bit of voice therapy to get my voice back to its best shape. Um, so that's kind of how I've become interested in speech pathology, and I'm now finishing up my master's degree in speech pathology. And um, speech pathologists actually have many different areas that they work with. So we get to work with um, kids in the school system. So you, um, you may be seeing a speech teacher at your school kids, or you have a friend that might be seeing a speech teacher. Um, we also work with people that may have had a stroke or had a brain injury, maybe from a car accident, and we get to help them learn to talk and speak and write and think again. Um, but we also get to work with voice disorders, and that is my favorite part of being a speech pathologist and helping people to speak or sing again when they've had some issues with their voice. That's really cool. It's a lot of fun. It really is. So I have some questions to ask you of some things that I've been thinking about that I think my students would like to know. Okay. So my first question is how does our voice work? How does this work? Is it just magic that just happens? Yes, it's just magic. It's just yeah. magic. So there are four components to speaking or singing and how our voice works. So the first one is breath. So you take in that nice deep breath and then the second part is phonation or the way that our vocal cords come together. Um, and so a good example of that, I'm just going to stand up here and show you guys. So what do you think is going to happen when I blow between these two pieces of paper? Mm, are they going to fly away? I don't know. Let's see. What happened? They went together. Like They went together. So that's the same way that our vocal folds work. When we take a nice deep breath in and we go to speak, our vocal folds come together because the amount of pressure that's coming up from our breath through our vocal folds and they create a vibration or an oscillation. Ooh, fancy and word. That, yeah. <laughs> and and then that sound goes into our resonators or our head. So our resonators could be like our nasal passages here that um, the sound is sent into that area, into the mouth. So our biggest one is our mouth, right? Yes. Um, and then the last component is articulation. So our teeth and our tongue and how those sounds are formed in our mouth in order to make a word or language. There's a lot of pieces to this. 
A lot yeah. of things have to happen in the right order for us to be able to talk or sing. Yeah. What are some ways that we can keep our voices healthy? Some of the best ways that we can keep our voices healthy is by hydration or drinking enough water. <laughs> yes, Miss Sloan's got her water. I've got mine here too. Always. So kids between five and eight years old should be drinking. Most of my kids. Yeah. So those kids should be drinking about five glasses of water a day. Wow. Yeah. Kids between nine and 12 years old should be drinking about seven glasses a day. That's a lot. It is. And then 13 years and older. So I'm in that older part. I think Miss Sloan is too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have to be drinking about eight to 10 glasses of water a day. Hmm. That's a lot of water when you think about it. It is. But if it helps keep you healthy and it's better for other parts of your body too, not just your voice. Exactly. So those vocal folds, they really need that water in order to help um, vibrate or oscillate as efficiently or as well as possible. Because it's supposed to be easy. If they're not wet, they don't they exactly. stick together. They stick together. And, you know, if you've got like lots of allergies and um, lots of gunk in your throat, ew. that water, yeah, ew, that water <laughs> helps to um, thin it out, thin out that mucus and that gunk in there so that your vocal folds can move together a little bit better. Absolutely. Um, um, should I just here, use my voice all day or should I? Oh, definitely. Scream all the time. We should definitely give our voices some good rest. Um, we rested at night, but during the day, it needs some rest as well. Um, if you think about it, if you go outside and exercise, when you come back in, your body needs to rest, right? Because mm -hmm. of those muscles, they're tired. Well, in your voice box, you have muscles in that area as well. And those voices, or excuse me, those muscles need to um, rest throughout the day. So giving yourself a good 30 minute to an hour break, especially if you've been talking a lot, it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, and then using your inside voice instead of your outside voice all the time, of course. But um, what's the difference? What's the, what is an inside voice compared to an outside voice in case we forgot? Yeah, I think we all forget from time to time. That inside voice is like if we're having a conversation with our friends inside or our mom and dad. That outside voice is maybe if you're using a louder voice on the playground to call your friend that's way over on the swing set or something like that. But we don't mm -hmm. want to use that outside voice too much. Right, just, um, just a little bit, right? Just a little bit, because sometimes with that outside voice, we end up screaming instead of actually just talking really loud and supporting that sound really well. And screaming is not usually a very well supported sound. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to make sure we're taking care of our voice box by using that inside voice as much as possible. And what about singing songs that are too hard for us? Like singing songs that are maybe for grown-ups or for people who have classical opera training like you do. Should, should I be singing that if I don't know how to do it the right way? Definitely not, Megan. I mean, Miss Sloan. I should call you Miss Sloan. It's okay. <laughs> but um, we should definitely be singing songs that are made for us. So if you've not had training in opera or um, singing songs like who are the big artists these days miss sloan like um ariana grande or mm -hmm. adele adele some of these other like big name singers if you've not had training singing those songs you should not be singing those songs when miss sloan sings in class when i sing in class my voice vibrates a lot should my students voice be vibrating like that no, so that vibration is called vibrato. And that is something that comes naturally as you get older. So you shouldn't try to make that vibrato happen 
So I because shouldn't, I shouldn't do this when I sing? Uh-uh. That's not what causes that sound. So it's, um, it's creating a lot of muscle tension in your voice box and in your neck and in your shoulders when you're creating that vibrato like that. And that's not good. <laughs> it's not good. No, it's not. It could cause you to have a lot of voice, voice problems. doesn't do that to start with. We shouldn't try to make it do that. Definitely not. It'll come naturally on its own. All right, Alden, I have one last question for you. A lot of my students are obsessed with these Visco girls on the internet. And a lot of them talk like this. Is that good for you? Oh, that's what we called the Valley Girl talk back in our younger days. It's Visco girls now. I know. So that's called vocal fry. And when people speak in vocal fry, it means that they're not letting enough air through their vocal cords. You remember the trick we did earlier with the two pieces of paper? So the vocal cords, when people are talking on vocal fry, they're not quite coming together. They're just kind of there making noise, and right? Tight, right? They're not they're very to move. Tight. tight. Yes. And so um, if you're not letting in enough air through those vocal cords in order to vibrate well enough to produce enough sound, that means that the muscles in your throat and your voice box are probably working overtime, creating lots of tension in your throat. And that's not good. What can happen when you don't take care of your voice? So have you ever gotten like a blister or callus on your fingers? I have a blister right now. Oh my gosh, Miss Sloan. So that's <laughs> something that can happen to your vocal cords or your vocal folds. They're the same name. If you are not using them properly and providing enough air and you're talking on vocal fry all the time and you're not getting enough water and you're screaming at people all the time, then you could get a little callus or like a kind of like a blister on your vocal cords, um, which could make you sound hoarse. Have you ever been sick before kids and you've got that really hoarse voice? Mm -hmm. So um, that happens when you're sick because everything's kind of swollen in there. But, um, but vocal nodules or blisters or like polyps, that sort of thing could um, cause your voice to be kind of raspy or hoarse and not quite yourself. And how do they fix that? We fix that um, by lots of vocal rest and um, drinking lots of water. And a lot of people will come to see us speech pathologists to give you some voice therapy. Mm -hmm. See, another thing that you do. Yes. You help people achieve a healthy voice when they haven't been using it right. Yes, exactly. And that's very exciting to me. It is. Thank you so much for letting me interview you. Hopefully all of the people that watch this video will get some really good information. I think this is good information, not just for my students, but for anybody yeah. who, who is interested in speech pathology or really anybody who talks, which is pretty much everybody who's going to watch this video. Exactly. It's important to take care of your voice the same way that you want a healthy body. You should want a healthy voice. Exactly. exactly. All right, friend, I'm going to put you on the spot one more time. Okay. Will you sing just a little bit of opera for us? Oh, <laughs> sing. Ave Maria. Isn't that beautiful? Yay! Hey. Thank you so much for letting me interview you. You're welcome. Thank you. I hope you. to see you soon after yeah. all of this is over. Definitely. Get some mild snuggles. Always. <laughs> all right. You guys have a great day. Wasn't that so cool? I hope you learned something new today. Remember that I miss you, that I think about you, and that I'm ready to be with you in the music classroom again soon. Happy Thursday.